In the 70s, whoever controlled oil controlled the world. That's why we've triggered so many regime changes and wars. But the way we produce and use energy is evolving. The world is moving to renewable energy sources. This is Congo. It's a giant country in the heart of Africa. This is the map of cobalt-rich crusts and cobalt mines in Congo. 15 of the 17 cobalt mines in the Congo are owned by Chinese companies. Children working like modern-day slaves. The Democratic Republic of Congo struck a big deal with Beijing. History of brutal colonial exploitation being repeated. Why China rushed into the Congo in the early 2000s? Welcome to Untruth. The world is heading into an all-electric future when everything is powered by electricity. Electric cars, trains, ships, and even electric propulsion spacecraft. These millions of forthcoming vehicles will need powerful batteries, better batteries than before. And building better batteries means using new materials, like cobalt a key component in lithium-ion rechargeable batteries. Cobalt is rare, valuable, and difficult to find. So, the question is, who will have power over these new precious minerals in the future, and how will they use that power? Cobalt is a popular metal. It was once used mainly as a ceramic colorant, but it has gotten a lot more attention recently. It's used in jet turbines, rocket engines, laptops and smartphones. It's part of lithium ion batteries, which are used to power electric cars and store energy from solar panels, wind turbines, and other renewable energy sources. And eventually to power electric propulsion spacecraft. An electric car caught fire. Firefighters are not prepared to deal with their batteries. In 2006, more than 4 million of batteries were recalled by Dell because of the risk of fire. Cobalt ensures batteries do not easily overheat or explode, and it helps extend the life of batteries, thereby playing a vital role in the transition from fossil fuels to green energy. Therefore, from a political standpoint, cobalt is the new oil. Whoever takes over the cobalt sources can control the world. More than 70% of the world's total supply of cobalt comes from one country, Democratic Republic of the Congo. There are around 150,000 artisanal miners in this region who work alongside 17 much larger industrial mines. Most of the small miners sell the cobalt ore to independent dealers at local markets, most of them Chinese. The ore is then sold by these Chinese dealers to larger companies in the Congo, where it is processed and exported. Congo Dongfang Mining International, or CDM, is the largest company at the center of this trade. CDM is a wholly owned subsidiary of Hawaii Cobalt Company Limited, a China-based company. Overall, 90% of the cobalt produced in the Congo is under China's control. CDM regularly destroys people's homes to build new mining sites. Not to mention that the extraction of cobalt has been connected to child labor, environmental destruction, corruption, and human rights violations. After collecting almost all of the Congo's cobalt production, the ore is smelted at CDM's facility inside Congo and then shipped to China. Hawaii further refines the cobalt in China and sells the finished product to companies that make battery components in both China and South Korea. In turn, these companies sell to battery manufacturers, which then sell on to some of the world's largest and best-known consumer electronics companies, including Apple, Dell, HP, Motorola, Microsoft, LG, and Samsung, as well as vehicle manufacturers like Tesla, Volkswagen, and Chinese firm BYD. China controls the main supply of cobalt. When it comes to the new energy revolution, China is in pole position, and its state-backed cobalt companies play a major role. China has the power to raise prices at any time and even cut off the rest of the world. 
attack Taiwan, for example, and if the other countries object, just threaten to stop providing them with batteries. By 2050, all vehicles and public transportation will be electric power, including tanks, military aircraft, and other armored vehicles. Chaos would ensue if we're unable to supply the batteries that vehicles need. It may be better to consider securing the supply chain for essential minerals before fully embracing green energy. 